Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Sec, and Merry Christmas Eve. I've had a pretty interesting last couple years. Um, in 2017, for Christmas, I hit 10,000 subscribers. The next Christmas, I had 75,000 subscribers. And now here we are with over 150,000 subscribers, which is just mind-blowing to me. It's weird, and honestly, I, I don't know what to say other than thank you for everyone who's stuck around and supported the channel. I really do appreciate it. It's completely changed my life, and uh, I, I still got a lot left in me, so. So let's see how far we can push this. But in the spirit of Christmas, I want to do something a little bit less formal today, uh, something a little bit different. I've gotten a lot of questions in the past on what smartphones I've used over the years, so I figured, hey, why not just do a video on it? So uh, here we are. I've used a lot of phones in my time and not just the newest iPhone, which is what I use now. So let's start this off by going back to 2011 when I got my first smartphone. Say hello to the HTC Wildfire S. Uh, this is a crappy phone. <laughs> I had just gotten out of elementary and uh, I was going into middle school so my parents wanted to get me a phone and so they bought me this which was a cheap for the time Android smartphone. Keep in mind this was 2011. Now I would say most cheap smartphones are at least usable but um, not so much in 2011. I was just thrilled to have a smartphone, you know a phone with a touch screen that was mind-blowing to me at the time. When I first got this I'm not sure if I had any classmates who had a smartphone yet so I was pretty proud of it. It came with Android 2.3, it had a 320 by 480 3.2 inch display, a 5 megapixel camera that could record video in up to 480p, a very low powered 600 megahertz processor, and of course 512 megabytes of RAM. At first the phone didn't seem that bad, but once the novelty kind of wore off, uh, it definitely started to feel slow, and it wasn't long before it was pretty painful to use. I remember being annoyed at how little it could do, it could like barely play Angry Birds. I ended up using the phone until about late 2013 or early 2014. It's around that time, and the reason I know it's around that time is it's because when Flappy Bird was at its peak and I remember having this phone and trying to play Flappy Bird and I couldn't because it was too leggy so that should give some perspective on how bad this phone was. The wildfire served me decently for around three years and I have to say just having a smartphone when I was that young was really cool. Of course nowadays you know an 11 year old probably has a pretty decent iPhone or smartphone and uh, it's, it's kind of weird to think about but back for me when I was 11 I had this and it was awesome. Unfortunately I don't remember the passcode to this phone so I'm gonna have to try to figure a way around it because I'd really love to get into it and do a review on it hopefully without resetting it so I still have all my old games and stuff but uh, regardless this was a really cool phone and very grateful I had it even if it uh, was pretty crappy in the long run I was born in 2000 and it's really weird to think about that my age group is one of the last to grow up without an iPad in their hands before they're even like 10 years old it's kind of crazy but getting back on track I eventually moved on from this to the iPhone 4 now now this I got from my uncle for free, so huge props to him, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> this really was a huge, huge upgrade. The iPhone 4 wasn't exactly the nicest phone still in early 2014, but it was on the latest version of iOS 7, and while iOS 7 was slow, it was miles better than this. I could play any game I wanted to, I could do pretty much anything I wanted to on here, it was great. I was just really happy to have an iPhone, because a couple years before this, I had started to really like Apple products for some reason. I think it's because my school had pretty top-of-the-line iMacs for the time and it felt so much faster and smoother and more reliable than my home computer that I equated that speed and power with Macs and Apple in general and while that's a little bit flawed um, I mean you can't blame a kid for thinking that and so I think that's why I started to really like Apple it's actually because of this phone I have a YouTube channel today if you go back to my first video it was actually a review on this phone back when I would have been 13 very close to 14 and uh, it's not a good video uh, uh, really it's really bad but it was pretty unique in that there are really no reviews of an iPhone 4 in 2014 if you look it up now that wasn't my first video ever I had had some hockey videos before that and probably some Minecraft ones too but that was the only video that was even remotely successful for me getting about I think 25,000 views or something like that it was over 20,000 anyway and that was a big deal for me at the time I uh, thought that was the coolest thing ever and uh, while I didn't start pursuing those types of videos right away I my next video is from uh, the iPhone 4 in 2015. It did kind of plant the idea in my head that maybe YouTube one day could be something I could pursue a little bit more. So who knows what would have happened if I didn't have this phone? You know, I may not have a YouTube channel right now, and that's kind of crazy to think about. But this phone was slow in 2014, and it only got slower from there. 
I actually worked the summer of 2014 and I was probably making about minimum wage, but I wanted a new phone simply because I wanted to buy my own. I really appreciated getting this one, but I wanted something a little bit better. And this led me to get the first phone that I ever bought myself in late 2014. This is the iPhone 5C Blue, and it's not the exact phone I had back in 2014, but it looks exactly the same. I think it even has the same amount of storage at 16 gigabytes. I loved that phone. I really, really liked that phone and I got it for a really good deal I remember at the time. It was so much faster and it felt so much better than the iPhone 4 and when I got it, it was only a year old which was kind of crazy to me. Of course the hardware was two years old but you know the phone itself wasn't. I don't have a lot to say about this phone. I didn't do any videos on it at the time uh, but I really did like it and it felt just a lot better but I didn't have the phone for long. I actually sold it to my friend the next year and after I sold it I got this the iPod Touch 6th generation. So I got this uh, basically as soon as it came out and I think the June of 2015. I wanted it because it had the A8 chipset which was the same in the iPhone 6 so I thought it would be a lot faster. It wasn't a lot faster but I thought it would be. I just thought it would be a good pickup especially because it wasn't that much money and I don't regret getting it but I do think the iPhone 5C was uh, probably worth keeping. I think that this was okay but it wasn't much of an upgrade so I probably should have just stuck with the 5C. Regardless this thing lasted me uh, quite a while and eventually my brother would end up using it for a while as well. It has a horrible battery in it. None of these iPods have really aged that well because of the battery, I would say, but it worked for the time. It did the job, and I have a lot of fond memories of jailbreaking this one on iOS 8 and 9. I, I jailbroke it all the time back when it was still pretty easy to do, and yeah, it was fun, and I actually kept this for quite a while, all the way until around the time iOS 10 came out, so I think late 2016. That is when I bought a refurbished iPhone 6 off of eBay. I've always jumped around devices a lot. I think it's just because I needed some variety in my life for whatever reason, but regardless, I bought the iPhone 6, and this felt like an actual upgrade over the iPod Touch and the iPhone 5C. It had Touch ID, which was awesome, and yeah, it was basically the same as the iPod, a little bit faster because it wasn't underclocked, but generally it, it was pretty similar that way, but it was bigger and nicer, and I just liked it a lot. This isn't the exact iPhone 6 I had, although it's the same color I had. That one had a big gnarly scratch on the back, and it also was slightly bent, so wasn't ideal. It came that way, uh, refurbished, wasn't the greatest condition. But yeah, I, I liked this phone a lot, uh, but not enough. And so that's why in early 2017, I bought an iPhone 6S. Keep in mind, every summer I've been working, so I do have money that I can spend on iPhones. And I also sold the iPhone 6 for, I think, actually more than I bought it for in late 2016, which was part of the reason I bought the 6S, because it about evened out. And this isn't the same success that I actually bought a couple years ago. My, my brother still uses that 6S. Uh, this one's just a cheap, crappy, broken one. But yeah, I absolutely loved my 6S. It was a lot faster. It brought better Touch ID. I really had no complaints with the phone, and I probably wouldn't have upgraded if it weren't for a certain something coming up. My brother still uses it. It's going strong. We replaced the battery last year, and it's doing pretty well. He'll probably want to upgrade next year if I had to guess, but uh, yeah, I can still run iOS 13. This is still a great phone today, and if you're using it, you're probably doing fine. Also, the camera was a big upgrade for me. It could film 4K, so for a while, this was actually my main camera for YouTube. And this next part's going to seem like a bit of a tangent, but it's kind of ties into the next phone I bought. So around this time when I got this, I had kind of rededicated myself to doing YouTube videos a little bit, or I don't even know about rededicated because beforehand I hadn't been doing videos consistently at all. I just kind of did them once in a while. But in early 2017, I pumped out quite a few videos before kind of just stopping uh, in the May of 2017. And then I worked that summer. And this actually leads into the reason I started doing YouTube more consistently in the first place. Uh, because during that summer I was working and it wasn't a fun job. It was a very labor intensive moving around car parts type job. Uh, it wasn't fun at all. I appreciated that job. Uh, it definitely taught me hard work and that's all good, but I didn't like it. And what I was finding is that from the videos I had made earlier that year, I was pulling in like 200 bucks a month from Google just from having those videos sit there picking up views, even though I wasn't making any more. And before that, I hadn't really made a lot of money from YouTube. So it was kind of crazy to me. And that's when I realized, hey, maybe YouTube YouTube is a legitimate job opportunity, not just something to do once in a while for fun. So after the summer was over, I was like, okay, I'm gonna start doing YouTube videos instead of getting a part-time job because that was my original plan was to get a part-time job so I could, you know, pay off my car insurance and whatnot. And so that's what I did. I started making YouTube videos in hopes to make it my actual job. And well, I succeeded. But there's something I did that I probably didn't need to do, but I wanted to do anyway. And it was kind of like an investment into my channel. And that was buying the iPhone 10 as soon as it came out in 
out in the November of 2017. So I don't have the iPhone 10 anymore, I can't show it, but uh, you can see some footage from my original unboxing. Hey guys, what's up? It's Josh from 91 Tech, and here it is. Finally, guys, I got the iPhone 10 that time. So I've never actually got an Apple product brand new before, except for an iMac, but never a phone. Yeah, that's a lie because I bought the iPod Touch 6 new, but regardless, I was super excited to get that iPhone 10. I thought it was the coolest thing ever because not only was it the brand new crazy, like futuristic iPhone, but it also was an investment in the channel for me. And it made sure that I was going to keep pumping out videos to kind of make up for the money I spent on it, as well as hopefully make YouTube my actual job. It was my dream job when I was 14 was being a YouTuber. I thought that would be the coolest thing ever. And while I didn't end up doing a ton of videos on the iPhone 10, so you know my pinned comment was a lie, it did result in me becoming very dedicated to the channel. Since I got the iPhone 10 and even slightly before that, I have barely ever missed a week when it comes to uploading. That's through school, that's through lots of things, and it's been, uh, well, things have changed a lot since then. The next year I bought the iPhone 10s because I, I figured that I should, that I should dedicate myself to buying the new iPhone every year. Year. That was a mistake. I kind of regret buying the 10s. It wasn't any better than the iPhone 10. Well, it was a little bit better than the iPhone 10, but barely. And uh, I mean, it was all right, but I do kind of miss that iPhone 10 because it was a great phone. Of course, I ended up selling the iPhone 10, and then this year I sold the iPhone 10s, and of course bought the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I love this phone. This phone feels like a real upgrade from the iPhone 10 10 and 10s, whereas the 10s didn't feel like an upgrade from the 10. It's a great phone. I really like what Apple's done here, and so uh, yeah, that's where we are now. I iPhone 11 Pro Max, and next year, if Apple does a pretty decent sized upgrade, I probably will buy the new iPhone and sell this one. So that's every smartphone I've ever used, starting with the HTC Wildfire S. Of course, I've used more smartphones than that. I have a ton of smartphones. A couple years ago on Christmas, I did a collection video of all my iPhones. I have a serious problem. I just want to throw that out there. This is a problem. This is not okay. <laughs> I've definitely gotten a lot more since then. I don't think I'll do a collection video like that again because I don't I don't see the point, but it's been a wild ride. Um, YouTube is really cool. I, I can't believe that I have this opportunity to make money doing what I like to do. You know, tech has been a passion for me for a long time and the fact that this is my job now is insane. So I can't thank you guys enough for, you know, uh, sticking around and watching the videos because I really appreciate it. Through the up and downs. I'm hoping to just keep making this channel better and slowly but surely keep uh, climbing those subscriber ranks. Uh, here's to a million subscribers. I want that gold play button. It's gonna happen. But yeah, that's it for me. So thank you so much for watching. If you actually watch this through, you're pretty much a legend. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I've got a couple more videos I think planned for the end of the year here, including hopefully one on this bad boy here. This is the first ever iPad and it's amazing. Uh, so hopefully that video will be coming soon. But regardless, thanks again for watching. If you want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech, I'd really appreciate it. Again, Merry Christmas. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.